Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm It's Robbie Rhino and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the new US light tank in Cold War, the RDF LT, which stands for Rapid Deployment Force Light Tank. And this tank is an era 2 light tank, which is the Escalation era, uh, in the Western Alliance obviously, and it is the tank that you get when you purchase the Ultimate Season Pass. It's a six shot auto loader and it's very mobile and we're going to talk about the statistics of the vehicle and then we will hop into some gameplays for you. So I'll bring up the detailed statistics for you. Some of these will be altered by my commander and equipment setup but I'll talk you through the base statistics, talk you through what's changed and then we're going to pop into the gameplay and of course if you'd like to skip through to the gameplays obviously you're more than welcome it's your your way to watch the videos however you want so that's absolutely fine so let's crack on with the statistics so this tank earns 15 percent extra bonus xp 10 percent extra commander xp and 60 percent silver bonus earn, which is very very nice and of course Cold War premiums are absolutely fantastic for raking in the silver and with the games being slightly faster on average than World War II you are able to get more games in the hour and make a ton of silver which you're going to need for the British uh, main battle tanks that have come out today on the 14th of December. Uh, this tank has 2400 hit points and a base view range of 550 meters. In terms of the engine it isn't too bad. It's a 400 horsepower engine with a 29 power to weight ratio, which isn't too bad. Um, the speed, top speed limit going 64.4 kilometers an hour forwards is okay. It's not as good as something like the Armadillo, but it's kind of in line with most of the other light tanks in era 2. Um, the hold traverse is 40 degrees a second and the turret traverse is 60 degrees a second and now we get on to the really nice <laughs> exciting bit of <laughs> any tank as I always say it's the uh, the gun this is a 75 millimeter automatic cannon it's a six shot auto loader with a reload time for the clip of 11.5 seconds with an intra clip reload of two seconds so the gun has 15 degrees of gun depression which is really nice and an amazing 40 degrees of gun elevation so you can shoot to the skies if you wish. The damage on the APF SDS rounds is 205 and on the HE it's 250 and the penetration is 354 on the standard APF SDS and on a premium APF SDS it's 418 which is not as good as something like the Stingray but it's a lot better than quite a few of the other light tanks in era 2. The shell velocity, is, shell, velocity? So the shell velocity is also really really nice. It's 1501 meters a second on the standard rounds and 1542 meters a second on the premium rounds with the HE coming in at 905. It's got a really nice space aim time of 1.9 seconds and a nice base accuracy of 0.32. Fires 16.74 rounds a minute. And yeah, it, it reloads in 11 and a half seconds. You'll get that down and it kind of feels a bit like a, a batch at 12T if you've kind of played that in World War II. You know, it's very mobile, light tank that can reload a clip very quickly, put a few shots in and then rinse and repeat and do it that way. It also carries 72 rounds. So it, it, you might run out of ammunition, but it will take you a while and you'll have an epic game if you do. I'll just quickly t talk you through the armor. Um, there isn't any. That's the review done. Uh, no, it basically ranges uh, from 25 millimeters on the hull and the turret in most of the hull. As you can see, 25.4 there and on the turret. Um, there's kind of a 50 millimeters space plate here, as you can see on the gun and obviously just below the turret. I think it's spaced out, but that's protecting just below that. Um, and that's pretty much the real this to say about the armor as you can see it's all blue and purple in here which is never good news but it's extremely well angled and I've bounced off this tank and I've bounced a lot of shells in this tank uh, quite often people are auto aiming they just hit an auto ricochet angle so don't rely on it but you might get lucky with occasional sort of bounces but yeah let's hop into what I use on my commander I use six cents born leader rapid loading Steady aim, snapshot, situational awareness, camouflage expertise, muffled shot, and green thumb. And this is my armadillo crew, or that I've been using in my armadillo. I'm just improving my, you know, the clip reloads. I'm improving 
couple of gun handling perks, um, situational awareness because of the view range, and also some camouflage skills because I want to stay hidden. And this has got a pretty nice, uh, nice, <laughs> pretty nice camouflage, uh, camouflage rating. Uh, I'll just go into the equipment now. So I run advanced optics because I feel like I want to cut through the enemy light tanks camera rating and try and spot them. I also use both of the speed equipments. I use the traction system and the advanced powertrain just because I want to be able to stay away from getting rammed by the Eastern Alliance heavies and the MOBATs and things like that. And yeah, I feel like if I didn't have them, then you will be outrun or at least caught up to by the heavy tanks in era 2 and I just feel like as a light tank that I can't have that happen so I really want to use the mobility so I have a chance of getting away and if even with these equipments you'll find that you still sort of you're on a level playing field with the heavy tanks in terms of speed it's just the camo rating that you have you know to your advantage um, so my statistics now having said all of that what's changed with my commander and equipment setup uh, I now go 74 kilometers an hour forwards, 31 backwards with a power to rate ratio of 29. My hull traverse is now 44 and my turret traverse which is really nice is 62 degrees a second so that means you can swivel around and your turret will acquire the target nice and quickly. I've now got a 1.8 second aim time and a 0.28 accuracy which is really really nice but do be wary that during rotation the accuracy that I've got it down to is 0.67 so you are going to have to sort of be wary that when you're firing a leading targets during turret rotation it is liable to miss a few shots it, it doesn't feel the most accurate as it doesn't feel as it good as it is on paper basically but um yeah today just bear that in mind um and with all that said i think let's just talk about the view range that i've got now which is 672 um i can sim rating of 224 so yeah very nice it's not as good as the armadillo but it's better or on 11 player infield than something like a Sheridan, it's very similar, and the Stingray and things like that. So let's hop into the gameplays and show you what kind of games I've managed to have in this tank. So we're in the first replay of the video, we're here on Vineyards and in a light tank I like to go to the line that is in between, the ridge line that is in between the 5 and 6 line on this map. I take a little jump there going forwards and because you're a very light tank uh, I lose a couple hundred hit points there, which is a little bit of a frustrating start to the battle, but nevertheless we're going to carry on anyway. Um, so I like to use this ridgeland because you have all the foliage here and you can cross people spot into the north that go to that um, spot in A5, A6, that little sort of hill bit that is contested quite hotly by heavy tanks with good turret armour and... Uh, medium tank. So I'm going to use this ridge line now because I'm low profile. Just go around backwards and forwards. Of course, there's no artillery in Cold War for the moment, um, <laughs> uh, and I'm, I feel pretty safe because if I'm going backwards and forwards, it's going to take a really nice shot to hit me, and they might not even get shots on me at all. So when I'm uh, re-stealthed, I like to sort of just pop up, make sure that top of my sort of tank, top of my turret is just poking up, so I'm able to get my commander's hatch out and spot them. And yeah, I'm just going to carry on doing that in this position. I'm a little bit we uh, weary, wary. I'm also weary, I'm very tired, but I'm also wary of uh, tanks that are going to make it to that A6 position as that heavy tank has. But as you can see from my camouflage circle, even when moving, of course, um, I am sort of on the cusp of being spotted. If I uh, fire, I get spotted. Um, and if I don't fire, I won't. But in that uh, in that short sort of little um, little bit of spot in there, a little bit of active spotting, we've picked up uh, nearly three K or just over three K in our assistance, and managed to get a couple of shells in as well. And it feels really strange this tanky Cold War because I quite enjoy it. I like the reload. I like popping out shots really quickly. The intra clip reload of two seconds can be a little bit frustrating sometimes because I feel like I'm hanging around opponents too long. If that makes sense, something like an armadillo, you've got, you know, you're a lot smaller, you're a lot quicker, your traverse is a lot better, and you just fire a lot uh, faster, even with the nerf of that ta that tonk that tank uh, got. I can't speak today; English is hard, um, which is ironic considering we're playing British tanks. But there we are. Um, so yeah. Anyway, what was I saying? We're talking about this sort of feels like you're hanging around tanks a little bit too much 
when I'm trying to circle them, I feel like I just, I can't go in, pop the shots off and get away as quickly as I'd like to in something like an armadillo. Um, even the mauler's a bit easier because the camera rating's better, it feels like, although this is quite comparable to a mauler. So I kind of try and spot at the start, usually, get long distance shots in if, uh, if I can, and then I go in later on and use my hit points uh, later on to go in and dump my shells into an opponent. So that even if I take one or two shots, it doesn't matter, and I'm trying to push my damage up. But the first game you're going to see here on Vineyards is all about the sort of spotting role that I'm playing in this tank. I noticed that I was getting shot there from the enemies that have circled around towards our base, so I've used the bridge as cover. There's a 120 directly in front of me, and I'm just going to try and poke up and keep him lit for my medium tank. That puts a lovely shot in and sets the 120 on fire. We're going to go in now on the move, put a few shots in, and from that range it shouldn't be a problem. This doesn't hit a lot of shots on the move. It doesn't feel like it hits as many as an armadillo or as a mauler, something like that. But at that kind of range, I like to take my chances. And as you can see, with my combat rations boosted, my reload is down to 9 seconds for all these shells, which is not a bad uh, DPM sort of exchange, really. I, I quite like it. It's just a bit frustrating when you miss a lot of your clip. But then again, you are reloaded very quickly. So if something's circling you, if you just stay out of harm's way for... 9 to 11 seconds and then you'll be ready to engage again. So we're pushing up our assistance total here, managing to get up to 6k. We've only done just shy of 900 direct damage, but I just wanted to show you if you wanted to play this more like a sort of scout light tank, which of course most light tanks kind of should be, but there are better ones for damage dealing like the sort of Sheridan. I feel like the Armadillo is even better for damage dealing than this tank is, and things like a Stingray are sort of more suited to uh, to damage dealing and than this tank is, but you you can make it work as you'll see in the next couple of replays. There are uh, another two in this video, and yeah, it's it's a very fun tank. I think it's slightly frustrating that the light tanks, apart from their camo rating, don't have much on the heavy tanks. I think the heavy tanks are so extremely powerful, uh, but you know it is unique. It's nice to play a slightly different sort of style and try and spot the heavy tanks for your opponents. And I hope they bring out more sort of tank destroyers and a little bit more variety, uh, as they have been. So there you go, we bounce a shot off that really weird, <laughs> has a paper armour but it's angled it away that even paper would bounce. Of course that's absolutely rubbish, it wouldn't, but you get what I'm saying. So we pushed our total up now to 7.4k assistance, or 7.6k assistance, it looks like someone's set on fire. We're just trying to get our last few shell uh, shells in. I'm playing with fire here, I know that the game is probably won. Um, I've probably overextended here a little bit too much. I'm just trying to escape with my life. I'm just trying to get over these ridge lines and get away. And as I go forward, I'm losing all of my health, but I'm distracting the opponents. <laughs> I'm keeping them lit up. My team are taking advantage of that. And uh, that's the end of my game. But we managed in all of that. I don't know why I'm paying. I think it must have been late at night. I just feel like I went forward trying to play aggressively when a few people weren't. That's that's on me. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things. I think sometimes it is frustrating to see players that have more hit points sort of sat at the back, not going in and taking advantage of the end of game situation. But of course, people are entitled to play however they want. Um, but yeah, I think I was just pinging to get them to, to try and move up, saying that, you know, if we push now, the game is pretty much all but one. Um, in terms of hit points, we have a massive advantage, and in terms of tanks, we do as well. But yeah, we, we manage a fairly decent game, and uh, I'll just let you watch out the rest of this uh, replay. It will be over very, very soon. I think we caused enough of a distraction in that game just to sort of make sure that the focus was on us and not on our uh, friendlies and our friendlies managed to put the shots in when we were scooting around distracting the enemies called the enemy and and in, in that re in that regards it is a little bit like an armadillo like a little bit of a pesk a lot of the light tanks actually are because of the camo rating you're not spotted until you get up like sort of within 150 to sort of 50 meters depending on foliage and where you are and then you get spotted and then yeah by that time you're already close to them and um yeah you're able to dump your shells in. It was a little bit lackluster, I guess, the damage. Um, but you can obviously make it work because, you know, look how good the armadillo is and things like that. So you can definitely make this tank work. 
So that's the end of that game. We finished in second place, even though we didn't do a lot of direct damage. Uh, 8.1k assistance, 1700 direct. We finished with 1300 and four base experience points. One kill. And yeah, very, very nice. We pick up 347,000 silver. Have a nice game. That's enough yapping. Let's head into the second game where I do a lot more direct damage and have an impact in that way. So see you in a bit. So we're now in the second replay of the video on Feet Bar Ridge, which is really nice to see in rotation after a long time out. And I think this map, uh, it plays really nicely in Cold War. Uh, you have long sort of sight lines if you wish to sort of scout for enemies you know on the horizon and you also have lots of sort of all these ridge lines to get hold down and you have a lot of room to play your sort of light tanks and medium tanks uh, in a more sort of scouting way if you wish um, you usually find that it's a bit hectic at the moment so I think there's a there's there's obviously a lot of new players since uh, this map was last in the game and obviously after a while a map being in the game you find that a certain map has a certain meta a lot of people like to go to a certain place uh, and that does change with 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 the player base changing and at the moment I can't quite predict what teams are going to be doing so what I've chosen to do at the moment in my uh, RDF LT is to come here to this position in D6 the bottom of D6 and use all of these little trenches to sort of just poke up spot tanks um, around me of course my view range as you can see extends for a large portion of the map. I'm, I'm spotting that hill where a lot of tanks like to come from their spawn and, and sit in E9. And I'm just going to sort of sit here and try and keep things lit and hopefully uh, get a few shots in as well. And if I do get shot at, I have these, these trenches to fall back or forwards into and I'm low profile so I feel like I can evade shots fairly well. You do have to be a little bit careful with lighter tanks like the light tanks and some lighter mediums in uh, on this map that the sort of tank traps, the, the sort of destructible cover and all that kind of thing can slow you down dramatically and there are jumps like that where you manage to again as in the last replay lose some health um, and somehow look out my um, ammo rack there but we repair and we go on. Um, we picked up a shot into I think it was a mobile on the hill around 600 assistance. I think I might have pushed a little bit too far here um, and I've noticed that that uh, tank's coming after me so I'm just going to try and escape, try and wiggle and uh, make myself as hard as possible to hit. Unfortunately I have a bit of a physics moment there um, and I do not want to get hit by the ATGMs on this M60A2. I'm going to try and use that rock as cover between me and him and I'm going to put my last few shells in. This is a nice turret um, traverse that you can see here. We bounce a few though but we also put in a few and I'm off on my merry way to go elsewhere and try and come in from a different angle but in that engagement we managed to pick up 1900 assistance and we're now up to 801 direct damage we're going to see what we can do i think this is a really nice tank to come in any kind of auto loader basically it's nice to come in when an opponent is distracted dump your shells by taking minimal damage you know preferably no damage like i'm doing now coming in behind a tank uh, keeping them unawares when they've just fired so I can get a couple of shells in and then I can leave and I've put a couple of shells into that uh, RDF LT on the enemy team uh, and he was taking that in the shell coming after mine and I'm just going to back up this heavy now because you are reloaded so quickly you are able to you know get get your shells in very very quickly you don't have to go too far away from the battle if you have support you can just circle around and come back in and you should be reloaded within 9 to 11 seconds. Don't really do much there, but if, if anything, but I try and cause a bit of a distraction and I was going to come up behind the rear of that heavy tank and try and put some shells in. Of course, as with all sort of APCR, APF, SDS rounds, you will lose penetration over distance. That could be a little bit of a problem if you are firing, sort of, you know, especially at Space Armor, especially at, um, at the... Eastern Alliance heavies, uh, but we're getting some nice shots here into this MOBAT. Just going to fire our last one there. Goes into the top cupola, I believe. There, we managed to bounce a shell from a f uh, an enemy light tank there by the looks of it, probably um, like the T92, something like that, maybe. Um, again, we're reloaded again. 
and we're going to go off and try and find our next targets. There's only three uh, enemy tanks remaining. There are three light tanks. There's one on this hill and I'm going to come up and see what I can do. I'm going to reload on my way to the hill so that I'm fully reloaded with all my six shots when I get to the opponent. Uh, I have to be a bit wary that he won't just <laughs> be pre-aimed for me and shotgun me. But I see a shot fired to my right there. Look over free aim and I can see it's the uh, enemy RDFLT. We're getting our shots in and we're just ducking between every sort of two seconds of that interclip reload. We're just ducking behind so that he doesn't get a shot into me and that's the way I don't lose too many hit points there. We get a friendly little nudge by our uh, teammate there and we're just going to try and help our teammates take out this, uh, this light tank. We get another shot into the... Uh, light tank but we change our attention to the BMP1 who has ATMs that could be very dangerous get a shot into his tracks trying to retrack him here um, probably not necessary to uh, to do it at the moment I mean I guess it's just me trying to get the last bit of assistance but we managed to get a ram kill in the uh, <laughs> in the RDF LT which is isn't too easy considering this tank isn't very heavy um, but just in that sort of short space of time there we're able to pick up a substantial amount of damage to sort of bulk up our game a little bit there we pick up 4.8k direct damage 2.3k assistance we get a kill and we have 1304 base experience points finishing second on the team so we're going to head into the third and final replay of the video and i shall see you there so we're now in the third and final replay of the video we're back on deep bar ridge uh, since sort of playing um, after the last update where they introduced the revamp maps, all I seem to be getting is um, <laughs> Thief Vile Ridge uh, and Deathfall and uh, probably one other map in rotation for a session, especially on Cold War, but that's that's okay. It's nice to see these maps and uh, it's a nice map for a light tank. So I'm going to be sort of going towards the south of this map, sort of heading on around and seeing what I can spot that comes down the one line from the enemy spawn. As you can see, there are a few more um, bots, that's what they're called, <laughs> bots on the uh, enemy team for this battle, but it just goes to show what you can do uh, damage-wise if, if you are given the opportunity, and of course, being a scrub, I need the bots to do it. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been having kind of, I guess, in between this game and the sort of first game, kind of roundabout results like in, in, in that um, in that level I haven't been doing incredibly well I haven't had any what I'd call sort of epic you know games like where you're getting the sort of 7 to 10 K markers but I'm having some decent impacts in terms of the spot in between sort of 1 and sort of 4k uh, per bout on average and I'm getting sort of between 2 and sort of 4.5 5k on average um, in terms of direct damage and I think it, it's not a tank that you're going to be easily doing sort of a lot of direct damage and it's not a tank where you're going to be like the armadillo was when it first came out and especially uh, when it first came out you've seen results like you know 12 13k assistance damage it's just not that kind of tank that you're going to be doing that you, you can get epic games i've seen a few already but um there are tanks that it's a lot easier to do that kind of damage in so we've come down here um there are a few more enemy tanks uh, than, I'd <laughs> than I'd hoped and I'm just kind of trying to cause a distraction wiggling in and around but I think I've outstayed my welcome and I'm just going to fire on a move and escape with the mobility this tank has. Uh, in that sort of engagement there we managed to pick up 1600 assistance and 2.2k direct damage and I'm just going to try and use uh, these rocks here to try and get up on that hill but I think I sort of ever so slightly skidded back down so I thought I'm just going to sort of rinse and repeat and help my tanks out that are down here. Um, I was going to go right out front, but I'm not going to do that in front of a T62M1 because that has an HGM, I believe. I think it was added after it was introduced. So I'm just going to leave. They're uh, outnumbering us by quite a bit there. Uh, I might be able to get a different angle if I go up onto the hill. So I'm going to pop my reload off, you know, get the shelf back in, and we're going to go up onto this hill and see if we can find a different line of attack and a different opponent to come in and sort of swoop in on and I see this MOBAT is fighting um, another heavy tank down there and I see there's another T62M1 in the distance. I'm going to sort of uh, see if I can try my luck. As immediately as I fire that tank pops the smoke which is a bit frustrating 
but I didn't hold out much hope of hitting the sort of lower plate from that angle and I wouldn't have penetrated uh, with standard anyway. So we uh, we popped our combat rations in the meantime and we got our reload in and now the seams are very even. We're going to sort of float around this little middle area keeping that T62M1 lit. Uh, trying to get as much assistance as possible. I noticed this medium tank is sort of coming along in front of me. I was hoping to wait till he fired, but it looks like it's just completely uh, focused on the enemy tank. I mean, it is a bot, so what did I expect? Um, but we managed to get a few shots in. Um, fortunately, we just reversed in time there as he fired and uh, just tracked us, but we get our, all of our shells in, bouncing one, I believe, or two, and then we're just going to use an ability to get up on this ridge and I think this tank is really nice uh, in sort of combating medium tanks uh, just because of the mobility and the camo. Uh, with the heavy tanks they can ram you, they can keep up with you, but a lot of the medium tanks can't um, and some of them have a, a, a slower traverse or slow enough so that you're able to sort of evade their guns. Uh, we're going to put a few shots in there and try and get out through the trenches here without taking a shell. Just trying to sort of dip in and choose the path of less resistance because some of these sort of destructible little bits here do slow you down, as I said earlier, <laughs> quite, quite a lot. Uh, going to try and come up behind this T62M1. It's a bot, so it's probably going to be able to just to snap me anyway. I'm just trying to come in from a different angle. I can notice I'm still um, detected. A shell comes in from my right somewhere. I'm not sure where that's from, but I'm just going to try and escape now and get some distance because... Um, those tanks were converging on me. I didn't have a uh, sort of friendlies right there to my assistance. But fortunately, the M60A2 on my team shuts down the Object 120, which is obviously a very dangerous tank uh, with a very, very hard hitting gun. And now that this 62M1 is focusing on my uh, <laughs> the bot on my team, I'm going to come up to the side and the rear of this T62M1 and get as many shots as I can in and hopefully finish him off. Unfortunately for me, sort of <laughs> pays attention to me, but fortunately we're able to duke him round uh, and get our last remaining shells in. And that's a little bit annoying there that I didn't finish that tank off because of the low rolls in Cold War that you don't have the same RNG now as World War II where you're rolling. You know, you can roll higher. You often do leave tanks on sort of one shot on this tank if you go in with a clip. You have to sort of... Uh, expect to low roll and expect maybe to do a lot less damage than you would on average in this clip or you should on average should I say um, but yeah in, in those engagements we managed to boost our direct damage up to 5k our assistance up to 1800 and that's the kind of game that I consider you know a pretty damn decent game in this tank a pretty good game for making silver and I'd be happy with my impact regardless of whether there was a lot of bots or just you know all uh, all player uh, real players on the enemy team. So we trying to fire on the move here. That bot fire, uh, put smoke out. So we're just going to try and escape because I find it really annoying trying to fire through the smoke. And instead we're going to try and finish off this stingray. You can see the accuracy here on the move is a little bit sort of iffy but I just waited till I got closer to put the final shell in to make sure that I got that shell finished that stingray off and now we got the rear of this T72AV unfortunately before we could put the final shell in the M60A2 on my team finishes him off and the Sheridan gets finished off which means we win the battle and yeah we have a nice decent game in this tank and I hope that shows what this tank is capable of you're capable of some nice assistance you can play it you know just purely sort of sort of scouting and go, going in at the end or you can try to go damage at the start long range and then go in to use your autoloader uh, but just be wary that big heavy tanks will bully you <laughs> so thank you very much for watching this video i hope you're enjoying the british uh, mbts as they come out um, i hope you all have a great week i'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now